two straight, the Philadelphia Union look to continue their ascension in the East as the club visits Red Bull Arena in Harrison, New Jersey for the first of two meetings against the rival New York Red Bulls. From our studios in Philadelphia, welcome to Philadelphia Union Soccer with Marissa Pella. I'm Dave Leto. This is the start of three games in eight days as the Union square off against the Red Bulls. Winners of four straight. This is arguably one of the best pressing teams at MLS. In fact, they have a ton of depth of scoring. Ten different goal scorers for Jesse Marsh's unit as the Union look to build off of a thrashing 4-1 victory over RSL last week. Oh, the Wings were very proactive getting in behind RSL's outside backs, not to mention the Union were very very clinical in the final third. You'll see Alcino will find Rosenberry, who is calling for it. That is his first goal of the year, the third in his career, to give the Union that 4-1 win, their second consecutive last week. And with more for this matchup, we send it over to the men calling tonight's match, J.P. Delacamera and Tommy Smith. Thank you, Dave. Well, Tommy, two wins in a row. How do they make it three straight against the very good New York Red Bull side? Well, you know, each of those wins was a combined team effort. Dave, not a lot of games left on this schedule, so the Union need to make the most out of them. It's a tough upcoming stretch for the Union. Three of the next four games are on the road against Western Conference foes. The good news for the other teams, Montreal has played one more game than the rest. D.C. has the most favorable pathway to a playoff spot, even though they're in seventh right now. Six of United's final seven games are at home and New England and Columbus are on opposite spectrums. Crew SC is three points above the Union, while the Reds are just below the playoff line. Now turning to tonight's game, Montreal lost 10 of its first 13 games, but over the past few months, Marissa, they've been in better form. And with more, we send it upstairs to the guys calling tonight's match, decked out in their kick cancer scarves and pins, J.P. Delacamera and Tommy Smith. Thank you, Dave. Tommy, as big as this game is for the Union, it is equally as huge for the Montreal Impact. To do. Yeah, it took total five games in 15 days in the month of September, but you know the Union can battle back. We saw a slow start to 2018, then they were monstrous throughout the summer months, so you expect them to have this turnaround even though you have Seattle, Sporting Kansas City, then the Open Cup Final against Houston. This is one of the best counter-attacking teams that I've seen the Union play, especially at home. This was the first home loss since the LA Galaxy game when Ibrahimovic went off of that 3-1 loss to the LA Galaxy, but give Montreal credit for this when Remy Guard's team was very poor at the start, they're now rolling here trying to get back to the playoffs after missing last year. When we continue on our post-match show, we'll have Jim Curtin's full post-game thoughts as the Union fall 4-1 to the impact here in Chester. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this momentous occasion as the Philadelphia Union honor one of the best to ever wear the Union blue and gold, Sebastian Latou as the club's first member of the Ring of Honor. The numbers speak for themselves. Latou is the Union's all-time leader in nearly every offensive category, including goals, assists, and shots. In April of 2010, he scored the club's first goal in the Union's first home match culminating with a hat trick on that day. Let's rewind back to January of 2014. You were selected number one overall by the Philadelphia Union, being the first goalkeeper selected at the top spot in the Super Draft. How did that moment feel for you and your family? It's definitely a great moment. I remember my phone just blowing up. I'm getting text messages from all over. Uh... Has Blake been the best keeper in this tournament yes. so far? Yes. I guess yes. You think? <laughs> You've earned 32 caps for the Jamaican national team, also won the armband as captain. You start on the grandest of stages in 2016 Copa America Centenario for Jamaica, and also last year with the Gold Cup, earning best goalkeeper in that tournament, and also to the best 11. What's it like balancing playing for club and country? To be doing well with the union and going in and do a good job with the national team and, and it's about moments, you know, it's just like life. You have good moments, you have bad moments and I just think that at that point I was going through a really good moment in my career and I'm just happy that I was able to carry it over into the Gold Cup and had a successful run. He really has been a standout performer in this uh, competition. I'm more concerned about whether he's going to be able to continue here though. They don't want to be losing their star man. What happened on that play from what you remember and then you missed some time with the Union? How did you recover and get back uh, playing for your club? Yeah, it was a tough moment, you know, definitely. 
the final game, you're the captain. So winning or losing, you always want to be on the ship until the end, you know. And Decades from now, when you look back on the career, what do you want the legacy of Andre Blake to be? The guy who had individual success that led to team success and uh, a lot of trophies. Uh, I'm a winner, I want to win, you know, everywhere I go, I want to be able to, to have a positive impact. Sky, to your point, has a tireless work rate. I caught up with Brendan Burke, head coach of Bethlehem Steel FC, and he told me a story that when he was 16 in 2017 season for Steel FC, he came into a game at Tampa Bay and had a fantastic performance, getting an assist in that game, much needed points for Steel FC. The academy has done a remarkable job with Aronson. Keep in mind, Marissa, this is a guy that's played with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder throughout the years because of his size and stature. Look for him to have a great performance tonight in that debut as an 18 year old. It'll be a tough place to make your debut. Atlanta unbeaten in their last 14 matches. At Doge Kill in particular is going to get opportunities to shine because when you pop on the tape with the Red Bulls, they like to leave their defenders on islands. So Aaron Long might be in the back by himself at times. And also Tim Parker, who was a key all season acquisition from Vancouver. They'll get the outside backs high in this one. So the Union must take advantage out wide today. And coming up later in Union Free Kick Live, we mic up Union head coach Jim Curtin this week at training will take you behind the scenes for the Cubs prep for the Red Bulls. The Union have been shut out in the last three games against the New York Red Bulls. We see Corey Burke second on the team. It goes right behind Fafa. Need a big game out of Burke today. It's a historic night in Chester. At halftime, Union great Sebastian Latou will be inducted into the newly formed Ring of Honor. But first, it's back to business for the boys in blue as the Union hosts one of the hottest teams in the league, Vancouver Whitecaps FC. Welcome to Philadelphia Union Soccer with Tommy Smith. I'm Dave Leno. Tommy, how did the Union deal with one of the best counterattacking teams in MLS who's unbeaten in the last six games? Well, you've got to be careful that you don't get caught. Game Dave Leno and Tommy Smith on their thoughts on what's going on in the World Cup. Thank you very much, Marissa. Brazil, the last team to repeat in 1958 and 62. Germany taken to the brink against Sweden, but winning that game on a last-second restart. Unbelievable free kick by Tony Cruz. Kickoff is just a few moments away, so it's about time we check in with the men calling today's game as we said things over to the booth with Dave Leno and Tommy Smith. Thank you very much, Marissa. Tommy, how much will Kai Fogner play a factor in this new 4-4-2 diamond? Well, you know that he's expected to get up and down. He's expected to get up. He's going to be up there with Pico. So that's going to be, it's going to be key, their understanding. But the key also, Dave, is that he gets back and doesn't leave any room behind him because if he does, that could be big trouble. And different from last year, there's not traditional wingers this go round the 4-4-2. So up top, you're going to see Corey Burke coming off a fantastic season and Fafa Pico. What do they bring into the Union attack? Well, you're going to see, you know, the little man in there getting in the speed. He's going to be the key, and then he's going to play well off Burke. Burke had a great season last year. He does things for this team when they come on, and it's going to be interesting to see how Fafa pushing into the middle is going to work off Burke. That's going to be another key. Also a difference in the midfield. Alejandro Bedoya goes from the right to the left. Last year we saw him a lot in the right midfield position as the number eight, but here he's going to be on the left-hand side, a very versatile piece for the Union as the captain. Yeah, he certainly is, but we know El Senio is very comfortable on the right, so that's taken care of. Now it's up to Bedoya to go on to the left, and we've talked about the left. It is going to be key because we've talked about the two men on the left, now we're talking about the third man on the left, Bedoya, and how he fits in here. That's going to be key to this team. And with this new shape, you're going to see different press cues as well, and they have to limit Michael Bradley today, the U.S. international. Well, obviously, you can't let him run the midfield. If he runs the midfield, you're in trouble. It doesn't matter where anybody is. All right, Marissa, Matt, we'll send it back to you as the Union are trying to snap a 10-game winless streak against Toronto. Thanks so much, Dave. Looking forward to the call. Here's Fabian! First game! First MLS goal! Welcome to the Union, Marco Fabian! Here's Victoria, past 10, room the work towards the touch line, crosses it in, there's Pico with the left, it's in! What a volley for Fafa, 1-0 Union! Costa, one of the best number 10s, whips it a left cross to the back pass, Blake with the save, on Diego! Brick, wall, Blake! What a nap 
absolute, absolute top class save. The 34th minute, and it's stopped by Andre Blake, robbing Jonathan Osorio. Blake stands tall again. Bradley. DeLeon. Alro. Going to play a low cross in, and Michael Bradley delivers for Toronto FC. It's 1-0. TFC leads. And Pico up top as well. Mavinga keeps it on this half with Osorio. Leading Simon with the cross off of Blake. It's alive for Bradley, and Bradley goes up for 90. Michael Bradley with a brace. 2-0 Toronto FC. Good option there to Pedroia, the captain. Now the gates around Godoy. Here's Stochkel. We'll take the shot. Steered aside by Tarbell. Returns it for Madunyanin. Group here for Real. We'll cross this into the back post. There's Pico. And it's saved brilliantly by Tarbell. Shipped across. Pico tries to keep this alive to the near post. Tarbell's there yet again. Oh, that was a brilliant save by Tarbell. Beautiful ball inside by Real. To the right, and a calm. Rosenberry cuts inside. Team and a calm. Off of Sanchez. Leave it up. Top to a 2-0 lead, thanks to Tito Villalba.